Welcome back, everyone. You know, there's a phrase we hear often, public housing. And it's a phrase that is misunderstood a lot and provides a very valuable service to the communities. And here in Saratoga Spring especially, public housing authority plays a very vital role in helping people and filling a gap in a lot of ways. And joining me today is Paul Feldman. He's the executive director of the Saratoga Springs Housing Authority. So welcome, Paul. Thank you. Nice to have you here. Nice to be here. The, um, you know, I opened with that because it is kind of misunderstood. You think right away you hear public housing and you think, oh my God, people that don't work, people sitting their butts all day long, nobody's doing anything, they drink too much, there's <laughs> drugs, there's all these sort of things, right? <laughs> yes, correct. And in reality, while all f sections of our population have problems, correct. At, that's not the overriding thing with this. No, not at all. Actually, there's a very small number of people that would fall into that category, especially at the Saratoga Springs Housing Authority. Yeah, got it. We're, we're there primarily to serve um, the elderly persons with disability and working families, so people who mm -hmm. are not earning a living wage that would be able to afford an apartment up here in the city of Saratoga Springs. So, yeah, we do have those situations that you described earlier, but you know, we have a zero tolerance for that. So if, if those situations do arise, we take actions immediately to address them and eliminate those problems. Yeah, I got it. You know what? I want to cycle back on that zero tolerance thing. And I didn't mean to skew it. It's just that when you do say public housing, that's, a lot of people do come, that comes to mind. Right. Now, in what is the intent of public housing or the housing authority? The intent of public housing is to provide people with an affordable, safe, decent place to live, especially mm -hmm. in communities as affluent as the city of Saratoga Springs where a lot of people would not otherwise be able to afford to live here. You know, um, I've had many conversations with Mayor Yepsen about this and a lot of other people in town, developers in town and whatever, that, you know, here's Saratoga Springs, more condos, more condos, condos, mm -hmm. more high-end, more luxury, more luxury, more luxury, yet the workforce in this city needs housing. Absolutely. And unfortunately, the things we started off with here create a stigma for public housing. And there are a lot of people working in the city of Saratoga Springs who are eligible to apply for housing through the Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. And we have very nice housing. If you go to our website, www.ssha.org, you will see uh, we have pictures of our apartments. They're nice apartments, and mm -hmm. they are very affordable. Uh, people who work in the city of the Saratoga Springs get a preference point in our, our waiting list, so they actually get housed quicker than people who do not live or work in the city of Saratoga Springs. So we're a great alternative for people who can't afford to live here, who are looking for an affordable place to live. And unfortunately, that stigma of public housing is something we're trying to overcome here right now. Well, you know, Paul, I moved here, I think it was 1975. I'm familiar with Jefferson Terrace. Mm -hmm. And over the years, it's been maintained. Every single year it's maintained mm -hmm. and that it's upgraded. Um, it's well taken care of. And I know exactly what you're talking about here. You know, the whole idea that you can qualify for public housing, the housing authority, um, and there's a formula to that, correct? Correct. Basically, we look at the household composition, who's living in the household, and the income that each one of those individuals has. And then we do a formula that's set forth in regulations. And basically, you pay about 30% of whatever that total household income is, which is affordable by definition um, mm -hmm. in the eyes of HUD. Well, you know what? I remember I'm a, a little older generation, but when I grew up, there was a formula to that that your rent was never to be more than 25, 30 percent. Mm -hmm. And you know, unfortunately, we live in a, in a society now, you know, the disparity in incomes and everything else where people are spending 60, 70 percent of what they make a month on rent, which of course almost puts them in a position of having to decide whether or not to pay the rent or to, or to have a meal. Correct. Now, uh, you know, you take people that are need some assistance there, they're working and they're working families, mm -hmm. uh, but you have disabled people. Correct. And you have people on uh, the elderly who might also be, uh, are also on fixed incomes. Correct. And that, of course, is something that you provide. Yes. Uh, th those are really the three categories that, that housing was originally intended to serve, are the elderly who are now on fixed incomes, persons right. with disabilities who may not be able to work who are on fixed incomes, mm -hmm. and then the, the working families that I mentioned who are just not earning enough right now mm -hmm. to be able to afford to pay a market rent. And the hope is that there's other services that these families can tap into while the basic housing needs are met so that they can eventually become self-sufficient, no longer need the housing, and make way for the next family that needs right. it. Right. And of course, 
course, you know, that's <laughs> keeping the whole community healthy because you're providing adequate housing and safe housing, as Correct. you said to me before, for the working, uh, w part of the working population in order to keep all our businesses active and to maintain the growth in the city, the economic growth in the city, right? right? Yep. And the uh, being eligible to go to the Saratoga Springs School District is a huge benefit to families. Oh, yeah, also. of course. That's another one. Uh, 300, almost 340 units, yeah, right? 339 units. Got it. Okay. Here in Saratoga. In the city of Saratoga. City Springs. of Saratoga. Right. Yep. Okay. Got it. Um, I do want to cycle back on the zero tolerance thing. Okay. Um, now, of course, there's a process. You know, it's a federal agency, and if someone does need to be evicted, whatever, you have to go through the process in court and all these other things. And I'm sure you face that. However, it's noted that. That's a small percentage of what you run into, Correct. but when you run into it, you act. Absolutely. We act immediately. We have a lease, which a very lengthy lease, that specifies what's allowed and what's not allowed in terms of behavior, visitation, things like that. And when you, when you exhibit behavior that disturbs the other residents, whether it's abuse of alcohol, drugs, mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, not taking care of your apartment, things like that, then we take action. We start the legal process. And, you know, we work our way through the court system, and then it's up to a judge to decide whether or not that person will be allowed to remain at the housing authority. But we take action immediately. Yeah, you know, and I think that's very important to recognize that, you know, if you don't take action, then, of course, you, you know, it just follows that. It breeds on itself. It breeds that perception that's that we right. talked about at the beginning. <clears throat> and unfortunately, there are places across this country where housing authorities don't act. And th mm -hmm. then those behaviors do exhibit themselves, and they progress to a point where it can really tear down a neighborhood and that's why you know I enforce a zero tolerance approach because we want we want to be known as a you know a good part of the community and I think we are I mean mm -hmm. you mentioned our properties at the terraces in just the last year we put new siding on all the buildings new gable ends new uh, storm doors um, uh, we've been doing a, uh, new windows we've been doing a lot of work too yes we put a lot of we put a lot of money into taking care of the grounds and making mm -hmm. them blend into the neighborhood so you wouldn't know that it's public housing yeah i've got it well paul thank you uh, you know it's, it's a topic again that uh, somewhat stigmatized um, and especially in a city like saratoga springs where you know it's so it's such a prosperous city but it's all levels of income mm -hmm. and all kinds of people Correct. and you know providing safe adequate housing for the community grows the community. Absolutely. The amount of money somebody earns is not to find the person. Absolutely. Yeah, good. Yes. Oh, that, that's, that's a great point. Well, Paul, thank you very much for coming in. Thanks uh, for just, having me. Do you always wear a tuxedo to, no, to I'm, work uh, every I'm day? No, I'm going to be an honorary <laughs> bartender at the Saratoga EOC uh, fundraiser tonight. Now, rumor has it you're in dangerous company there. I think Cheryl and Mike are involved yes. in this. Cheryl H. Perez, the executive director of the Saratoga RPC, and Mike right. Finacci from the shelters, the director at the shelters, will be uh, my partners and will be in a con heavy competition. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> well, best of luck to that. I know Thank both you. of them fairly well. They both are visitors here. Uh, I've Thanks. interviewed Cheryl, especially a number of times. So have a great time tonight. Go thank ahead and raise some much. money for economic development. Yes, we will. And, uh, and thank you for coming in and talking about the housing. Thank Sorry. you very much for having me. You're welcome. To see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.